Day one, day two, day three, let's go! <laughs> it's my first time at Coachella Music Festival and I have so many tips and tricks that I wish I knew before I went. I learned so much that I can't wait to go again next year with everything I know now. And I hope this video answers any questions that you have. This is where we're staying this weekend. It's the Marriott's, Marriott's Desert Spring Villas. It's massive. One of the most important things you'll need to figure out first is where you're going to stay. Whether you're camping, Airbnb, or staying at a hotel, it really does make a difference. We stayed at the Marriott Desert Spring Villas one and loved it. If you're a GA, then get the shuttle bus pass and stay at one of the hotels listed, which is why we stayed here. It was a 7 to 10 minute walk to the shuttle at JW Marriott, which was super convenient for us. Whoa, okay, we have a full kitchen. This is the living room space with all our bags right now. This is a living area. This is a pull out couch, which we're using. Big space. Oh, there's a balcony. Let's see this. Woo, balcony. And then when you go into the main king size bed. There is this tub. Bathroom. Hi. And then a shower with one toilet. So four girls, one bath, but this place is huge. This is definitely enough space. Here's the view of the balcony and the golf course during the day. It's beautiful. As you can see, you could probably fit more people in here, but the one bathroom situation was a bit difficult, but we made it work. So what are the differences between VIP and GA tickets? We bought GA tickets with shuttle passes for $745. Yes, it's steep, but it's for three days and we were so psyched about the lineup, so it was worth it for us. VIP tickets go up to about $1,080. The main difference is that there is better parking in terms of a shorter walk to the festival grounds, cleaner restrooms, though I heard it was still not great. You have more shaded seating area, exclusive food, and shorter lines for food and drinks. We're getting lunch at the water grill, water bar. I'm gonna show you how it is. So one of the tips that we knew was to eat a full meal before going to the festival so you can save money. Also hydrate for days leading up to the festival. At the end of the day, we were really happy with GA tickets. And as you continue to watch this video, I'll show you where the non-porta potties are and what the food situation was like. Good morning, we're getting ready for Coachella day one. So here are some helpful tips before you head to Coachella that we found super helpful. One, download the Coachella app. It seemed kind of sketchy because there's only a few reviews and low rating, but it was actually so useful to use. The map is on there, it updates with any changes to the lineup and schedule, and it populates with the surprise artists once they're announced. You can favorite the artists that you want to see and it'll curate your schedule for you so it's easy to follow and to see which stage they're at. So that's what the shuttle looks like and this is the walk from the shuttle bus stop to the festival grounds. Another tip that I wish I did more of is to listen to the Spotify Coachella playlist and study up on the artists. Going through security, checking bags, and metal detectors. Once you reach the festival grounds, you'll go through security that was pretty relaxed. I recommend getting to know the area and know where the nice bathrooms are and fill up your water bottle. There's way less people on Friday, so go early to explore. Another helpful tip is that there are multiple locations for ID checks. So if the line is long at the one by the entrance, just go to one inside the festival grounds. You will need a wristband to buy alcohol or enter some of the 21 plus shops like the beer barn or this Aperol Spritz one. If you have an Amex card, you can get a free Ferris wheel ride. You can enter the Amex lounge or go in the express lane lines to buy merch. You can also actually get a free Ferris wheel ride by showing the Coachella app. Oh my God, and there's AC in the Ferris wheel ride. So worth it, great views and a great way to see the whole festival grounds, especially when it's so hot out and I'll talk about the weather and what to wear. For food and drinks, everything averaged about $16 per item. I got Hattie B's hot chicken sandwich twice this weekend and it was so good and filling and it was worth the $16. The art installations and shops were nice to explore, especially since most of them had AC. There's also a hidden speakeasy at the grounds. We saw this tip on TikTok but didn't end up going to find it. 
I saw a video later about it recently and it does look really cool so it definitely looks worth it to go find it. Another heads up is that there are lockers on the grounds. All four of us wore backpacks but we could have reserved a locker to stash things in. The lockers are right by the entrance and exit of the festival. During the day, it is so hot, and once the sun sets, it gets pretty cold. You'll see many people start layering. We ended up changing into pants, leggings, jeans, and jackets that we brought in our bags. It was also really windy, so it got dusty as well. So that's where the bandanas or face masks come in. This was just for day one for us, and luckily for day two and three, it wasn't that cold at night, so we didn't end up changing the next few nights. Okay. Outfit. The outfits ranges and honestly wear whatever you want and whatever is comfortable. It's so cool to see all the outfits and costumes and we definitely stressed a bit beforehand. If you're missing anything you can go shopping at Palm Springs which you'll see at the end of this video is what I did. So I bought this white skirt at H&M right before and I wore it for day two. Hats during the day is a must but for the cowboy girlies make sure you have a string on your hat because it is windy and your hat will fly away. I can't believe we got to see Bad Bunny. We got home pretty late and after each of us showered, it was 4 a.m. So we ended up sleeping in a lot the next day. I'm a bit embarrassed to say the time, but we really needed the sleep. And for our first night, we didn't have to wait for the shuttle at all and it moved really quickly. Okay, okay, I'm going to tell you, we woke up at 2 p.m. It was so late, and the shuttle line was actually pretty long, but it moved pretty quickly. So if you're coming to Coachella with a group of friends, this is what really worked for my group. One is setting a meeting place in advance. Once we arrived, we declared the green worm and the white X art installation as our meeting point, as it was in between two stages, so it was easy access, and while we waited, we could enjoy the performance as well. Another huge tip is to time stamps texts. There are cellular dead zones and your text will send very slowly. So by time stamping, we would know how long ago the text was sent. This was especially helpful when we separated and we're trying to meet up at another stage while the performance is wrapping up or to go back to our meeting point. So time stamping texts, very important. Day two was so epic because Blackpink was amazing. I wasn't actually a big fan of them before, but seeing them perform live, I am officially a fan now. And then we wrapped up the night with Kellen Harris. It was just, just oh, it was so amazing. We're still, I just can't, oh my God, I'm still reliving it. It was so good. So as you see here at the end of night two, we still had so much energy from Calvin Harris and it was definitely our best night. I have so many bonus tips for you guys. There are actually a bunch of water refill stations. So if it's really crowded, just go to another one. There are also some outside of the bathrooms that doesn't seem right, but they were perfectly fine. And our biggest tip is the bathrooms by Doolab are not porta potties. Those are the bathrooms you want to use. They're actual, real bathrooms with doors, actual toilets, flushes, like sinks. Go to the bathrooms by Doolab. Another tip is glow sticks. They were fun to have, and I suggest wrapping them on your things like your bags, water bottles, so you can see them in the dark. Our friend Matt had a nightlight pochita that was so convenient to find him or the group whenever we had to separate highly recommend. I would even bring those battery operated LED fairy lights or light up hat, sunglasses, backpack, fur jacket. There were so many lit up things I saw people have and wanted and it was really dark so having lit up items would really help. Okay, a few more bonus tips. Your phone screensaver, put it as a picture of you or your friends and their phone number in case you lose your phone. And everyone talks about having liquid IV in emergency there. We also recommend getting Mio Energy liquid drops. This is caffeine. It was great to put in our drinks to get a caffeine boost in the evening when there's no coffee around. I'll have everything linked to the Amazon storefront in the description below. 
So that's all the tips and tricks I have. I hope you found this helpful and comprehensive. These are probably just the basics, but after our first day, we felt like we learned so much and day two and three were just seamless. I absolutely loved Coachella and loved going with my friends, Andrea, Carolina, Victoria, Matt. You guys are the OGs. I've only met and known you guys for not very long, but it feels like we've been friends forever. So last and final tip, make sure to go with some epic friends because it's a rough three days, but it will be the most amazing three days of your life. If you have some extra time before or after Coachella, check out Joshua Tree National Park. This is actually my third time here and we always check out Skull Rock and Chola Gardens and it's a really great place to watch a sunset. And after Joshua Tree National Park, we went to La Quinta and had dinner at the restaurant 26. It was such an amazing weekend and I wish we stayed longer and I think next time I will take a few more days off just to recover.